everything that goes on around the world is that there's, there's a basic reason for it and that's because some people want to make a profit and they're going to do it, try and do it at the expense of everybody else. Shut up! Shut up! There's no such thing as economic rationalism. It's the wealthy getting wealthier while the poor continue to suffer. We want the World Economic Forum as it exists to be abolished and hence we want to demonstrate that today by, well in fact over the three days, by attempting to stop the actual meeting. S11, a protest against corporate greed by tens of thousands of Australians. The three-day blockade in Melbourne of the World Economic Forum showed the world that the people are willing to take on the world's ruling class. Uh, the WF's got 968 member organisations. They're the wealthiest, most powerful transnational corporations in the face of the planet. The WEF brings together the most powerful people in the world. We know that of the top 100 economies in the world, 51 are corporations and not nations. They basically set a political, economic and social agenda for governments in terms of uh, what they need in order to absolutely maximise uh, their profits. they could decide here that's to benefit ordinary working people or poor people because their agenda is more privatisation. Their agenda is more ripping money off the poor to give to the rich. Day one, Monday. While police erected barricades around the site of the WEF, thousands of people gathered early in the morning in the rain around the Crown Casino building. Chaos transformed into action as people were sent off in all directions to join the blockade. By 8am, all blockades were established and solid with all car park entrances covered. Bill Clinton felt obligated to go to the last WEF meeting to let them know that he was working hard on not only maintaining globalisation but speeding up the rate at which the devastation of the planet and its people takes place. So these are very powerful people who have a very big influence on governments. No one elected these people. They are there representing incredible amounts of wealth. He's not used for human good. He's not used to make lives better for ordinary people, but to ruin people's lives. Every time we stand peace! Every time we stand peace! People power in the streets! People power in the streets! Human lives not for profit! Human lives not for profit! WEF will make you stop it! WEF will make you stop it! Human lives are not for profit! Human lives are not for profit! I'm here to protest against um, various companies with really, really bad standards in regards to human rights and in regards to the environment. I disagree with the system of operation that they've got at the moment and the way they monopolise and marginalise, especially the third world.
The police tried a brief push through hundreds of protesters on Clarendon Street, but soon withdrew. We just stood still and like they couldn't get through. It was, it was pretty good. Every single word in there is filled with discussing and a critical decision is don't be... I, mean, I think you should accept we actually have a very, a very good media in this country. We're very, very critical. I'm very concerned about uh, globalisation, how it affects people throughout the world, how it affects people in the third world, as well as how it affects people in our own country. I actually came to play the pokies, but I uh, got caught up in the flow. You know, you know. people talk to us about free speech we make the point that these people have the greatest freedom of speech of any people on this planet this is our only means of expressing our freedom of speech by uh, amassing numbers at, at a uh, protest action like this these kind of people are spending tens of billions of dollars uh, organizing killing machines um, while billions of people around the world um, are, are in poverty the world has never been richer than it is today and millions and millions of people starve to death every year. It's just incredible. Bill Gates, on his own, could solve world hunger. Nike, colossal, gigantic corporation. How does it make its money? Paying Indonesian workers a dollar a day for, their, for the shoes that they make. And then they sell them to working class people here for 80, 100, 150 and 200 bucks. So they exploit the third world and they exploit us. Later in the morning, Western Australian Premier Richard Court drove his car into a wall of protesters. He was marooned for one hour before police battened their way in.
By this time, the number of protesters had grown to 12,000 or more. Police could only remain behind the barricades, forced to endure constant chanting and singing by the people. They call us naive, but like they're the ones getting done over. Everyone's getting done over, and we're the ones fighting it. So why, why are we naive? This is just stupid. We need to stand up and fight this. At noon, a rally of 500 high school students who had walked out of school marched to the casino to join the blockade. The day continued with a festival atmosphere and celebration with music, dance, speeches, drummers, giant puppets, clowns. The blockaders held strong. the WEF, we want to shut it down, but we want to do more than shut it down. We want to get rid of capitalism forever. We know that's not going to happen with this one protest, but it can happen with a revolution and we've got to build the revolution. This is just part of building it. Oh, I think we can get our message heard. We can, we can show a lot of people who don't know about this type of stuff that a lot of people are concerned about it. And yeah, that we, we just want to have our voice heard. So I don't feel that corporations have our interests at heart. They have the interests of profits and increasing profit margins. And it's not, it's not fair, basically. Peaceful protest, peaceful police. Peaceful protest, peaceful police. Peaceful protest, Day peaceful two, police. Tuesday, 6 a.m. Protesters start to arrive to join the blockade. If people could go down to this blockade here, we're holding a mass peaceful blockade. There's a build-up of cops, so we need the people there to keep it peaceful. With WEF organisers threatening to close the forum if delegates could not gain access, hundreds of riot police attacked the blockade lines in an attempt to gain the initiative.
The police attack seated protesters with batons, trampling, beating and kicking them. Twelve protesters were hospitalised and delegates' buses gained entry to the casino. I think they were trying to bring some more police through. Yeah, and we just blocked them out. And they, I think they got about two or three through, but that was about it. A couple of them had the batons out and they were sort of whacking people on the top of the head. We bring when we spring into action, protesting. We want the whole world noticing. Justice focusing on all the people and the hope that we bring when we spring into action, protesting. We want the whole world noticing. We want justice focusing on the people and the hope that we bring into action, protesting. We want the whole world noticing. We want justice focusing. We need to go out. There was almost total condemnation of the protesters from the mainstream media in an attempt to discredit their voices and their actions. Politicians, both Labour and Liberal, accuse them of being fascists who oppose the free speech of those attending the World Economic Forum. The police, as I've said before, did a sterling and outstanding job under enormous provo uh, provocation. And Steve Brax and the Labour Party have played a shameful role here um, this weekend. They've sent the police in to, to the most brutal display of state power against ordinary people I've ever seen. Business commentators in the media accuse the protesters of working against the poor by denying them the benefits of free trade. Bill Gates gives money to uh, charities. Bill Gates and others like him also give millions and millions of dollars to uh, presidential campaigns in their respective countries to ensure that they have a receptive government in power. Newspaper editors and TV news reports condemned them as a violent mob, while their pictures proved quite the opposite. People who danced with the fairies and we joined lefty extremists along with hardline anarchists and professional rabble rousers. Channel 9, Channel 7, Channel 10, it's all been complete and utter bullshit, actually, yeah. And any of the papers that have been owned by the people that we're protesting against, it's been complete bias. The mass media will not say what we want them to say, will not tell them the voice of the people. They're telling them the voice of their bosses, who are the people that we're protesting about. So of course they're never going to report anything that's negative about them. No one in, no one out, shut the forum down. No one in, no one out, shut the forum down. It was very clear that protesters had organised a overwhelmingly, like 99.9% .9 peaceful protests, and that the police had, in an attempt obviously to force through the lines, uh, in some cases quite savagely beaten people. We have like, dozens today injured. By 9am, thousands of workers were gathering throughout the city. We came here for one reason, to tell these assholes upstairs that what they're doing to people around the world is not right and we're going to tell them to get fucked. And we're going to tell them to get fucked time and time and time again. Fair trade, we 
want fair rights for Australian workers and workers all around the world. Because workers in Indonesia, New Zealand, are workers like us, they deserve fucking decent rights like we do to say, down to struggle, down to win. We're loud, we're union and we're proud. We're angry, we're loud, we're union and we're proud. We're angry. 2,000 construction workers had arrived. The crowd swelled. From Trades Hall, thousands of workers and trade unionists marched to the blockade site at the casino. Can I just get all the union workers who've come today just for our rally to give a big round of applause for those who've been here yesterday and the day before and everywhere else? Because they've done a great job in terms of protesting. We're all here about the same issues. The same issues about corporate greed and lack of respect for workers' rights, for communities and the environment. United will never be defeated. The workers united will never be defeated. This rally is important, this protest is important, this blockade is important because it's about justice. It's about the fact that corporate greed in treats workers with contempt. The textile, clothing and footwear industry is at the forefront of globalisation around this world. The workers united will never be defeated. The workers united. And it is the workers of the textile, clothing and footwear industry that have suffered at the hands of companies whose decisions about where they manufacture has nothing to do with the communities, the lives, the people, the families of those people who are actually making their product and making their profit. Their decisions are about where they will make the most money and that is the sole, the sole contributing factor to the way that they move around the globe. They pay no regard to workers. The people's mandate for a decent and just 21st century is here on the streets of Melbourne. Our mandate is about human rights. It's about people before profit. I don't believe that we should allow big business the freedom to destroy environments around the world, search out the lowest rates of pay anywhere in the world, destroy trade union movements, lock people up, torture people, kill trade unionists in the name of profitability. What we represent on this side of those barricades is a fairer future in which the workplace is guaranteed as a place where people do have the right to organise, where people have a right to a fair day's pay for a fair day's work, where people have a right to freedom of expression, where people have a right to opportunity for the rest of their lives. And that's not what we'll get from that Tower of Babel over there. What we represent on this side of the barricade is the right to give to the next generation a world the more beautiful for us being here, where the wildlife, the forests, the oceans, the air we breathe are guaranteed and passed on to the next generation. And that's not what those exploiters in that tower over there are about. Japan in Bayswater used to employ nearly a thousand workers in this industry here in Victoria. And like many other multinational companies around the world, they went in there and they said to those workers, you work harder, you get more skills, you put in more sweat for every measly dollar we pay you and you'll save your job. And they convinced those workers that it was to do with how hard they were going to work about whether they were going to have a job or not. And what happened? Those workers sweated, those workers worked long days and nights away from their families and the company made good profit, the quality of the product went up and what happened to the workers at the end of the day? They were thrown on the scrap heap. They were sacked with no regard for their sweat, no regard for their effort. The message is getting across. In fact, in Perth today, workers have walked off a building project which is affectionately known as Richard's Tower in the name of Richard Court in protest, in protest at the violence which Court 
was responsible for because of his arrogance in trying to drive through peaceful picketers. I went to the hospital yesterday and saw a 24 year old student, Damien Settle. He'd been smashed across the face three times with a baton. He had stitches across his forehead. He had his teeth knocked out in front. He'd been standing at a protest when Premier Court warned by the police not to go alone into a peaceful protest like this, defied that, went into the crowd, and in the result in melee, this young Australian got his face smashed in. His dad said to me afterwards, you couldn't meet a more peaceable young bloke. And this protest has been determined on peace, but has also been determined to make a point. And that doesn't mean being relegated to the footpath, it means stepping onto the pavement. As the suffragettes did, as the slavery abolitionists did, and as we are doing to make a point for a better future. We saw the Prime Minister yesterday saying that those people from poorer countries should be grateful for what they are doing. And I can tell you the people of Bougainville aren't grateful for the civil war that was created because Rio Tinto would not reach agreement with the indigenous people on that island. And I can tell you, the people of West Papua are not grateful for the environmental damage that's been caused in West Papua by the Freeport mine. And workers in Australia aren't grateful for the fact that Rio Tinto sacks them because they want to be members of a union. And I have to say, in my view, the bulk of our politicians, Labour and Liberal, have been captured by and capitulated to globalisation and free trade. And for a Labour politician to come to Melbourne and say that the church groups, the union groups, the environmental groups, the S11 are nothing but a bunch of fascists is absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. This rally is about fighting for the rights of workers around the world. We cannot fall into the trap of nationalism and racism. We have a responsibility as unionists, as activists, to struggle to make sure that every worker in the globe has the right to a fair wage, has the right to safe working conditions, and has the right to organise. I come from Indonesia, where the workers only earn $1.50 a day where the trade union activities always have been attacked by the government. What's happening in Indonesia, it's also happening here in Australia where you also face the same attack. It is always done by the same big enemy. These people who are now gathering in this forum. What we are struggling in Indonesia cannot be solved until Indonesian workers get the support from the Australian workers because we have to be united, we need the international solidarity to end all this repression, to end all this exploitation. As unionists we have a proud history and a history we should spread and grow with but we have to embrace our comrades, we have to embrace those activists and people who are prepared to struggle with us for a better world. Together we can do it. Thank you. The whole blockade is pumping. This protest has brought de real democracy to Melbourne. 
in, in a way we haven't seen for many, many years. It said that human need should come beyond, be, be before corporate greed. So tens of thousands of people have been awakened, I guess, to, to what these institutions stand for and the governments that support them. The next brutal attack from police came in the evening when delegates wanted to leave. 500 riot police attacked a blockade of 200, clubbing protesters and media alike. 30 protesters were hospitalised. Last night, looking at the television, uh, witnessed uh, scenes of police uh, uh, bashing people, thumping people on the side of the head with fists, uh, bashing people with um, uh, truncheons, and uh, the voiceover was saying how violent we were, the uh, the blockaders. Last night, I, I was here at about 8:30, and I interviewed a number of, of people who had been. Um, who'd been basically assaulted by the police. One guy in particular um, came and, and gave a, um, a statement that um, he had to intervene and, and look after a woman um, physically who had been, was be she was being beaten by the police, the right police who ran over the crowd. They're paid hoons, they're thugs. I've been standing here all day and they've been in undertones. Uh, they won't shout it out, of course, but they're saying, uh, when we come on the other side of this barrier, we'll beat the bloody shit out of you, you prick. That's why, of course, they never have to fight too hard from uh, governments to get decent wages and conditions because the, the politicians need uh, uh, this these bunch of thugs to, to protect the status quo. It was quite unprovoked. The police were quite aggressive. Day 3, Wednesday. Police set up more barriers overnight in order to get the buses in easier, preventing blockaders from taking up their positions. Hundreds of riot police then attacked a small blockade. One person was hospitalised, but police were forced to retreat behind their barricades as protester numbers swelled. Again that evening, Police used force and a woman was run over by an unmarked police car which fled the scene. Their interests are to protect the huge corporations meeting in Crown today. They've proved their violence. We don't want to buy into that. We want to maintain the non-violent blockade here. We want to stay here in our numbers. We want to show the world our strength. We have already won. We have already won the political agenda. 
Everyone in the world is talking about Melbourne as they did about Seattle. We want to get the message out that we've had enough of these companies ravaging the earth, exploiting people, and that's the main message we want to get across. We don't want to have any more of our heads busted. We don't want to give the cops an excuse to pick us off in small numbers. We want to maintain our forces, maintain the numbers here. This is the first time in years that trade unionists, environmentalists, um, everyone who cares about people around them and the planet um, are coming together all around the world and, um, and telling these arseholes that what they're doing is, um, is not on. We've been exploited, we've been oppressed, we're fighting back alongside people all around the world who are saying we've had a gutful, we've had enough, it's time to fight back. We're here because we've thought about things and we know that what we're doing is right. The people united will never be defeated. These institutions and the corporations they represent realise that there's nowhere they can go now, nowhere that they can go without there being mass opposition, without there going to be thousands of people that come out on the streets. Uh, I think what we've been able to achieve is bring together thousands and thousands of people, both here and also to uh, put this meeting, which may otherwise have taken place in the privacy of the casino towers, on the front pages of every major uh, newspaper and uh, TV and radio uh, news report, not only in Australia, but uh, in many, many countries around the world. They are so scared of the fact that they are losing, they are losing the political debate and we are winning it. Not just S11 people, the people at Seattle, the people in Washington, the people fighting corporate globalisation around the world, they know they are losing the debate. That's why we've got John Howard saying that, you know, uh, the rich countries have to do something about poverty. The only thing John Howard has ever done about poverty his entire life is create more of it. Peter Costello is talking about how we have to deal with the negative effects of globalisation. Peter Costello has spent his entire life creating the negative effects of globalisation. He was the lawyer for the National Farmers Federation and the companies that broke unions at Dollar Suites, Merchant Brin and so on. These people created the problems that we're here protesting about. A victory rally marching around Melbourne at lunchtime on the third day showed the exhilaration of the protesters, who felt they had lifted the veil which separates people from a sense of their own power. This is what democracy looks like! This is what they had demonstrated the power of the people in the streets, showing commitment and courage to continue the struggle for justice. The people united will never be defeated! This is all of ours and we want it back. Keep fighting We have the ability to take power um, over our own lives. Protesting for my rights and everyone else's rights in the world. The last time the ruling class had to put up fences like that and feudalism, it didn't fucking last long! It's about about the majority of people in the world that have got nothing and they've got everything! It's about about to reassert our democratic right and to fight for all the people um, all through the world to just treatment.
a few rich guys get together and discuss what they want to do with the economy, what they want to, you know, do with our lives basically, and we get no say in it, except we have had our say this week.